Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So we're carrying on with the workshop build video this week and because of the way things have landed I've had to crack on with things during the week and I haven't actually managed to get much of that on film. So like you can see here I've done a bit more cladding on the outside. So I've still got cladding to do which I can share with you guys but some of the cladding has already been done and also inside I've made a start with the insulation and OSB board which will be the inner walls of the workshop. So the reason I've had to do this, basically today's Friday and Sunday morning I'm getting the lathe picked up from my existing house and brought here to the workshop. It's going to live right about here somewhere. But because of that I wanted to sort of get cracking, get some of the sides on, get some of the boards on so I've had to just crack on with that this week but there's going to be plenty in this video to sort of show you what I've been doing and jobs that I've still got to do which are going to be exactly the same as what I've done before so same plan as I said in the last video going to be cladding the outsides, insulating and OSBing the walls and once all that's done we should have, well we'll have a shed, we'll have a big shed but in the future videos to come going to be putting the power in, going to be putting the air in, I'm thinking of extraction as well so we can suck up the chips around the machines and just get this thing from a shed to a workshop. So stay tuned guys, hope you're enjoying these set of videos and I'm going to start by, I'm going to start by cladding this last wall on the outside before doing the top. When it comes to laying the shiplap then, I'm using a 15mm shiplap compared to the original 18mm and this is mainly just due to cost. So when it comes to actually doing this, getting the first board in level is really important. And then from then it's just a case of cutting and nailing them all in position. And to make sure all these are going to be sealed tightly as well, I'm using a sealant just to go alongside the original boards to make sure I get no water ingress there. And fingers crossed this works out all right. So with the new section all boarded up, it was time to move on to the roofed section and this turned out to be a little bit awkward but not too bad because I had to work out some angled cuts to match the slope of the roof so I had to do it on the front panel as you can see here and on the back and then moving along the raised side part I just had to notch out some of the final top parts of the shiplap just to match the noggins where the roof timbers were so this was a case of using a multi-tool and get all them lined up before nailing the boards into their final position. And with that all done, that was the shiplap all finished and the outside all cladded. And I've got to say, it's starting to look pretty good now. The shed is slowly coming together and hopefully now it's going to be watertight. So that's going to be great. Not that we're seeing any rain anytime soon. Right then, all the cladding on the outside of the workshop is done. Only thing left to do there is paint that, but I'm gonna leave that to the end. So moving inside the workshop now, I've got the insulation and boarding left to finish off. And today is, what day are we, Tuesday? So we're past that Sunday mark and the lathe is in. So I'm a little bit gutted, the epoxy floor paint that I ordered didn't turn up in time so I'm going to have to paint around the lathe because I didn't want to delay that any further just in case I lost that window of opportunity. So that's not a big deal. So left to do today is I'm going to get all the boarding and insulation done and once that's all up I can paint the floor and off camera between now and the next video I'll be painting all the walls as well in a fireproof white paint, so that's pretty cool. So, gonna crack on now with the carrying on with the boarding and insulation, and when we come back, be painting the floor. When it comes to installing the insulation then, I'm using a carpet spray adhesive just to spray to the inside of the cladding before putting the plastic insulation up against it. So you can see here, I'm just rolling it out and giving it a rough measurement to get it to about two meters, so I can tear it off and stick it to the inside of the cladding. So this method works really well 
with this recycled plastic insulation. It tears really well and it's not really that itchy. So it's great for this sort of thing. And using it in past builds before on van conversions, I know it's a really good insulator. So from there, it was just a case of rinse and repeat really. Spray adhesive and rip and install insulation. So I've got all the rest of the inside of the shed to do. So I'm doing it in sections as I go, going back, filling in any pieces that I've missed or were too, not wide enough with the insulation. And then once I'm happy, I've got enough in there, I can then board it. So these boards that I'm using on the inside are nine millimeter OSB boards. So they don't need to be as chunky as the roof ones that were 18 mil. It's more just for decorative purposes, really. Any fixings I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be making sure they go through to the studs. So for the walls, it's really just a case of keeping the insulation in and making it look nice. So with the boards cut to size, screwing these all in place in various locations and then carrying on the procedure. Spray adhesive, cut the foam out, spray adhesive, cut the foam out. blah de blah de blah, blah. So moving into the final section now, just putting the last bit of spray adhesive in before putting the last bit of plastic insulation in. And with that done, I can pretty much say that's all the insulation done for now. And I can move on to boarding this last little section. So a bit more cutting and a bit more installing here. Turns out this board wanted to be really awkward while I was filming, but nothing the old hitting the drill on it wouldn't fix. So drilling this into place, I can then move on to the next stage. So unfortunately the epoxy floor paint never turned up. So I'm gonna to have to leave that for now and instead I'm gonna paint all the walls. So this is a white fireproof paint. Um, I don't know how well it's going to be rated against fire. I doubt you could blowtorch it. But I think for sparks and weld splatter, it probably should be good enough. And with this all painted, the workshop is starting to look like a workshop now. So thank you for joining me in this video today, guys. It's only been a very short one, just because I wanted to get the workshop all finished off pretty quick. So I didn't have time to film the entire section but in the next video please come and join me where you'll be seeing me install the electrics into the workshop and hopefully start to move some more of my equipment over and get this thing looking more than from a shed to a workshop see you next time guys